Hey there, Hayden subscribers. This is Pinobi, also known as the Acoustic Kind, here, doing a guest narration for Hayden over one of his Pokemon Wi Fi battles. Um, we thought it'd be a pretty cool idea because, uh, uh, in contrast to Hayden's more comedic style, I have a little bit more of an analytic style. So you can see some of the differences here in this narration, and if it's something that you enjoy, you can check me out. My channel link will probably be in the description. The opponent for this battle is going to be Xenon 3120. Obviously, this is a fifth gen battle. You can see the teams here. Uh, before we get into the action, let's just review them really fast. You can see that Hayden's team, being the bottom, with the exception of Golem, is pretty quick and offensive, whereas Xenon's is a little bit more defensive. So the burden is going to be on Hayden to see if he can crack through some of these barriers, walls, tanks, etc., uh, and all that kind of stuff. So let's see how it plays out. Xenon is going to lead with a Hippopotas, which will summon the sand, and Hayden will be leading with a Golem called Snowball, which in fact is not actually a Snowball. But yeah, obviously Hippopotas sets up the Sand Stream, which is going to boost the defensive ability of all rock types by 50%, uh, special defense, sorry, which is going to be good for uh, both players, actually. They both have some rock types to take advantage of that. Hayden's going to go straight for the EQ after both players set up rocks. You always want to set up rocks early. The reason Hayden's probably staying in and going for the EQ, even knowing Hippopotas is pretty defensive, is because uh, he can learn the Sturdy ability, which means that he will not be one-hit KO'd by any move. So that's probably why he didn't want to switch out so early on. And he is going to switch out now since the Sturdy is broken. And he can see that he's not going to be able to do too much damage to this Hippopotas. And uh, yeah, he knows that the opponent has Toxic, so he wants to go into a Steel type. Because Steels are immune to Toxic. And he went for a T-Wave, predicting a switch most likely into something offensive. Knowing that uh, Xenon can't do too much damage to this guy. Unfortunately, that's not going to be the case for Hayden. So he is just going to go for a Toxic now, knowing that he'll want to stay in. And unfortunately for uh, Hayden, Xenon was able to uh, take off a lot of the damage that he'd previously inflicted with his Golem with that critical hit. So he goes for another Toxic, I guess predicting a switch, because, uh, yeah, the other guy's attacks aren't doing Jack Diddly Balls, so that was, Xenon, or that was Hayden's thought process, which wasn't too bad. So now he's going to start firing off X-Scissors, because it is Stab, and he's actually going to get another critical hit, which is going to help uh, Hayden out. And if you guys don't know, this thing, uh, Dur Dedoran, is that what it's called? Uh, Durant, sorry, I'm not too familiar with the 5th generation names in English too yet. Um, it's going to do a decent amount. So the reason he switches back out to Snowball, I guess he thinks he's going to need his Durant for later, because uh, Steel types are very defensive and all that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, he is able to finish off the Hippopotamus, probably predicting the EQ, so that was a good prediction on Hayden's part. And even though it is going to put his Golem into a low... Uh, HP that's actually going to be good for Hayden because Golem's actually carrying an item called the Costop Berry, meaning that when his health is uh, at a very low range, it'll activate, allowing him to automatically go first. And since he knew he could kill off the Hippopotamus, Xenon would have to bring in a Revenge Killer, most likely, which is something with fast speed, and he would be able to kill it off. Um, I don't think the Costop Berry has actually been officially released yet, so I think it's currently illegal, but people really don't care too much about that. So, uh, yeah, Hayden went into Ambipom because it's a good lead. It's a good uh, thing to bring in on a double down. Unfortunately, uh, Xenon probably predicted that going to a four times resist. And Hayden U turned out, which was probably a little bit of a bad move because of Life Orb Recoil and because it was four times resisted. But he goes into his scrambled, uh, scrambled eggs, I guess, because Togi Kiss and it was a Togi P, which comes from an egg in the game. And he went to this thing because it's a special attacker, and obviously the opponent was a Bug Steel type, which has great, great. Uh, typing and physical defenses, and it's only weak to fire moves. So Xenon went to his Regirock because it does have boosted special defense because of the uh, because of the Sandstream, and he's going to start setting up curses. The fact that he uses Curse there, uh, which is a move that increases the defense and attack, reveals to Hayden that he must have a high special attack investment, and. Uh, yeah, there's not really too many safe switches for Hayden at this stage, so he's probably just going to just fodder out his Togekiss, trying to do as much damage as possible so that he will be able to revenge kill it, knowing that uh, Regirock isn't going to have any effective priority and it's going to be very slow. So it's not too hard to revenge kill as long as you can get it low enough. Now, I'm not exactly sure what Hayden's thought process was here, because he is actually going to go into his Raichu version 2, which is a uh, Galventula. And he could have gone into to Terrakion, which would have a stu uh, super effective stab move called Sacred Sword. Sacred Sword uh, it ignores the stat modifiers of the opponent. And even though it's a physical move and Xenon has plus defenses because of the curse, it would have probably, st well, it definitely would have been able to take it out. So a little bit of a misplay on Hayden's part. He is going to start going for Thunders, which if Xenon didn't have the rest, uh, could have got a Parahax in. 
Now, because uh, this guy does resist the drain punch, that was probably why uh, Hayden brought it in. Probably wasn't expecting the rest. And Thunder does have 70 base accuracy, but this Pokemon can get the Compound Eyes ability to boost uh, moves accuracy by, I believe, 1.3%. Or 1.3 times, <laughs> sorry. But uh, yeah, so that's going to be good for Hayden. And unfortunately, Xenon is going to be able to stall him out with the Sand, because it does do 1 16th of your overall HP damage per turn, which is going to really uh, put a damper on Hayden. So he's just going to go for the Energy Ball here. Um, I'm not exactly sure why. Can ener Does Energy Ball have any secondary effects? I don't think it does. Maybe Special Defense Drop or something. Not sure exactly what... Uh, his thought process was there. Maybe he was going for Thunder when Xenon wasn't asleep. I don't know. But now he's going to bring in the Terrakion, and you can see from the damage output of that Sacred Sword that it would have been able to Revenge Kill earlier, which is kind of unfortunate for Hayden. But he can just go for a second one, and that should be able to take it out. Unfortunately for Hayden, Xenon is going to predict this and go to his Reuniclus, which is a Psychic type. And, uh,. Yeah, it's going to be a great play for Xenon, and this is sort of what I was referring to at the beginning of the match, is Xenon has the uh, more defensive uh, style team here, while Hayden has the more offensive style, so he's really going to have to try to break through these barriers. So he goes to his Penis Pinch, because it can resist Psychic, which is the stab move, and it would be super effective against Reuniclus, so Hayden is going to predict that nicely, and he can outspeed with his Durant. So he's going to go for the super effective stab X Scissor. Unfortunately, that is a little bit obvious, and Xenon's going to go to his five, four times resist, Although there wasn't too much uh, Hayden could do in that situation, he could have gone for the T-Wave predicting the switch, but maybe Xenon was predicting that, and Reuniclus does have the ability that, uh, what's it called, Magic, uh, is it Magic Guard, which uh, prevents, you know, secondary things like Toxic and Parahax from affecting it. So this is a little bit stally, not really, they're kind of just uh, firing off their uh, stab moves at each other, even though it's resisted, so not too effective there. And I've been saying four times resist. Is it four times resist, or is it two times resist? I don't know. Uh, does bug resist bug? That's a good question. But either way, it doesn't really matter. The point is that Hayden is getting a little bit of Parahax on Xenon, which is good for him. But at this stage, it doesn't really matter because uh, Hayden can revenge kill pretty easily with his uh, Terrakion still, regardless whether he got those Parahax or not. So it's kind of whatever. We're kind of just waiting for one of them to die off here. And Xenon's been miss he actually missed a Mega Horn and all that kind of stuff, but he's finally going to land. Mega Horn does have like 85 accuracy, I believe, and 120 power or something along those lines. And uh, yeah, luckily for Xenon, or actually not really luckily, more like finally, he is able to kill off the Durant. So Hayden's just going to go ahead and bring in his Terrakion, go for the, the Rock-type move, which is a good play on Hayden's part because he doesn't have many Pokemon left. So he's going to have to go for uh, a Stab move. And his only other stab move would be the Sacred Sword, which he knows Reuniclus can resist, as well as Xenon's other remaining Pokemon, because you can take a look at the teams before the battle in this game. So, uh, good move selection on uh, Hayden's part. And he is able to live one Psychic because of the uh, special defense boost of the Sandstream. Uh, it most likely would have killed without it. Not going to say 100% sure. Uh, probably depends on some Max and Min. So he's going to bring in his last here, which is an Ambipom. Maybe uh, Xenon's predicting the U-turn or something, or the Fake Out. And uh, Hayden does go for the Fake Out. Maybe should have gone for the U-turn in that stage, just because, um, you know, Regirock coming in to resist it is a little bit predictable. But either way, not too bad, because Hayden does have the Brick Break, so he is able to take that out at least. And the Life Orb and the Sandstream are really stacking up against Hayden in this situation, so it's not looking too good. And Xenon's just going to go ahead and bring in his bulky Mandibuzz, which is a flying dark type. Uh, it is going to be able to sponge the double hit and finish the game off with a Brave Bird. So, good game, Hayden. Good game, Xenon3120. Uh, yeah, both good people. And whoa, I just saw Roller Coaster Tycoon on Hayden's desktop. That's what's up, but <laughs> like I said, uh, yeah. Good game. Thanks, Hayden, for letting me narrate this. It was pretty fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. They both used some interesting Pokemon, and it's cool to see some 5th gen uh, random Wi-Fi goodness. So if you're into these types of narrations, you can check me out. Link will probably be in the description. If you want to help out Hayden, leave a thumbs up. He's a good guy. He deserves it. Check out Xenon3120. He just hit 18k subscribers. He's a uh, awesome battler as well, and he had a talented YouTuber named Wild Chase narrate his perspective of this battle. So all things to think about and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, hope you guys had fun. Uh, yeah, peace out.